Welcome back to the madness, guys. Now, have you ever tried playing Terra Online and then tried leveling through questing and it just became dry, boring, and it's basically a world tour of the entire world, just playing quest tag from zone to zone? Yeah, it gets really boring. But there are other ways that you can actually level in this game. And no, I'm not talking about Kumas or Dungeons. Those things are atrocious as all hell. This one will actually help you improve your skill while you level because it actually forces you to learn to progress faster. Yes, I know. Learning? Progression? What the hell are you talking about? Well, I'm talking about BAM leveling. And it's quite easy to do and quite quick, considering the BAMs themselves at a certain point start to give you about as much experience as the vanguards that you turn in, if not more. So you end up getting up around 7-ish hours, depending upon if you have a late status or not, as well as any other experience boost. And I don't want to fool you guys, this is actually a pretty grindy process and it can get boring, so I do recommend if you want to do dungeons in between this, but this will help you get up really quick. So without further ado, let's get on with the rest of the video. Durr. Now, to start off, you talk to this guy and you'll go have you gather wood. After you get Heather his wood, you talk to him again, he tells you to go talk to a little girl, who tells you to go to help to her friend to find her lost bear, which is in a bush, because they ripped it and they threw it in a bush. And then you gotta go talk to another friend to go and get a needle to actually sew it back together. The needle's right in front of him, collect three, use the needle in your bag on the bear, give the bear back to the little girl, and the little bear will be put on the ground, you talk to the bear, and you start the first scenario. Which is, go and attack a couple of trees until you level and then you go talk to another dude and then you talk a bigger tree then you collect some stinky mud and then head into town where you talk to the guy again he gives you your first weapon upgrade then you get to go and use your bank to collect any of your exp boosts or whatever items you want like fashion coupons and anything that will help you out then playing what can only be described as quest tag in town with all the NPCs. You come into a cave and you talk to a jar. Then you get immediately ambushed by Argons as soon as you are finished with that. Use whatever AoEs you can just to get rid of them. They're kind of annoying. Then you go down the cave where you get ambushed by even more Argons. Then you talk to Jelka, the guy outside. And then you guys who kill, go kill a few more Argons. Then you talk to the captain after everything just spontaneously dies. Then you fight your first boss which you're actually going to lose because this game is rigged against you and makes you lose your very first boss encounter. Welcome to Terra. Are you keeping up with me? I know I'm going pretty quick, but this is just the starter stuff, so I'm just trying to rush through all this. Alright, after the scenario, you can play some more quest tag with Anya, and it leads you through a cave. After you get on the other side of the cave, you kill some bears, through kill three brown ones, then you kill one blue one. Afterwards, you run up a hill, talk to this dog dude, who is also lazy as hell because he wants to destroy three crystals right next to him, but he can't do it himself. You run up to ta the camp, talk to Dougal, he gives you first gear upgrades, and don't forget to use the letter that he gives you in his bag to advance the quests. Then you kill a handful of Argons, then go into town again, where you kill three more Argons, and then you talk to another person to kill two more Argons, and then you talk to an injured soldier and throw a flare over his body. Afterwards, you go up the hill, talk to a fence to enter the next scenario, where you'll encounter a bunch of random Argons that'll appear, and you just, like, take those guys out. And after you take them out, a spellcaster version comes in, and he's annoying as hell because he first starts off off the frickin' map. Then you encounter the boss that you fought back in town the very first time, who will pull off the same cheating thing to get you into a stun situation. But this time you have the power of Loli on your side, which will instantly unstun you, and then for some reason you start doing normal damage to this guy. After he gets defeated, he'll drop a bunch of loot. I recommend you pick it up, because you're not going to get earrings and rings for a while yet. At least till like level 20, 22-ish area, where you can get them from the tier tokens while leveling. After you get all your stuff, talk to Dougal, then you play some more quest tag, which will eventually lead to talking to the Flight Master, who will then allow you to travel to Vilica. Now this is also kind of a little funny thing, because this is where you're supposed to get your first mount as soon as you come in, then you get another quest to expand your inventory. 
and afterwards you play some more quest tag until they literally throw you outside the city to go off on your adventure. Now at this point I suggest that you bring whatever you can to help you advance your journey. Like uh, tier tokens, feedstock, alkesh, as well as uh, experience boost. Speaking of which, uh, there's one way you can nerf your experience and that's to bring your very own pretty boy. If you bring anybody along with this thing, it nerfs your experience for about 30%. So this is actually a lot better when you're soloing, and you can do dungeons in between to augment it if you get really bored, but yeah. Durr. Now, I mentioned crystals, and I want to explain that real quick, because you need to at least pick up these crystals, because you will not get these while leveling. I've noticed that. From the, almost no matter what class you play, you always end up not getting these. For leveling, these crystals are okay or if you're soloing out in the world. But any other situation in a dungeon or whatnot, maybe not so well. For leveling, I suggest you take one Wrathful, one Focused, and two Pounding, as well as get a couple of Hardy. The Hardies are kind of meh as well as the Pounding, because you can pick those up along the way. But the important part is, is just to pick up the uh, Focused and the Wrathful. And you can like just pretty much just buy those all over the for every level that you can, will encounter. Just keep them in your bags for when you hit those level ratios. To clarify once more, these work with any class except archer. If you're an archer, you want other things, but these work for the majority of the things. So these are what we're going to be using. All right. Once you're done playing quest tag in Velika, you come out here to Bulwark Camp and you kill these Sabertooth Tiger things to collect your pieces for your artifact weapon. The reason why you want the artifact weapons is because it's a lot more powerful and gives a better crit bonus than most other items in the game. You also want to enchant it all the way up to level 9. If you don't have the feedstock and alkesh for this, you should just kill more monsters in the area until you do do got the ability to enchant it. And I suggest you do this for the rest of the video whenever you get an artifact weapon. Up to this point, we've pretty much been covering stuff that you will have to do regardless, because it's a lot of chain stuff from the quests and whatnot. So, this is actually where the guide is literally taking off from the norm, where you either break ahead of the quest line, if you know where this is, you can check my map otherwise, or you can literally just follow the chest line until they have you kill this guy. But this is where the leveling guard actually begins, because what I'm going to say to just doing is just mull this guy to death for about 10 levels or so. Uh, he, I think he stopped losing experience around level 22 at the time of making this video, so you can just keep killing these guys. This is also a good way to collect feedstock and alkesh. The feedstock's not going to be so good later on, but the alkesh is level 3, and you use that throughout all your leveling from 1 to 60. But, and as you can see, the, killing this guy, he almost instantly responds, and you can keep murking him until you get your levels up. They also drop artifact relic things and whatnot, so just just keep at it. Just keep slamming, just keep slamming, just keep slamming, slam, 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 just keep slamming, just keep slamming. So yeah, though, you can just keep grinding these guys, like I said, to level 22. Once you do, you head up north to Basilisks, and you kill a few of those BAMs. There's actually an achievement in with this one. I only wanted to show you because of the achievement, because you can literally skip these guys if you get to level 2 off grinding the other guy. Now open up your Vanguard menu and only uh, check in the solo box. Make sure all other things are cleared, and you want to look at what the number are on the ban on the uh, Vanguard's itself. If it's a 0 out of 5 quest, it generally means you gotta kill BAMs. So use the teleport option in the uh, uh, Vanguard, and it'll literally take you to the next zone that you need to go for BAMs. It'll also highlight what, where the BAMs are in your map, so you can just walk right over to where they are, and then hit them up. In this case, you go to Godric's farm, and you kill Kuma as well. More than just Kumas, there's actually another one over here that you can do, but you literally can do this all the way up to level 65. And the improvement of killing the BAMs are, yeah, the vanguards might not give that much experience in comparison to like other quests and, or vanguards and whatnot, but killing the BAMs themselves almost gives you the same amount of experience as the vanguard, maybe a little less, especially if you have elite status. And killing five BAMs gives you a crap ton of experience all on its own, not including the vanguard. So you can kill the five BAMs, gain a lot more experience, like 3% of your level, which in turn means you kill 33 BAMs, you leveled. Uh, 
and that's actually just the rough estimate of it. A lot of the times you'll actually end up getting a lot more experience the first time you encounter them, somewhere around the vicinity of like 5%. But yeah, yeah, after the Godric's farm, you just go over here to Framebalisks and the Cliffs of Insanity. There's also another rare spawn that hangs out around here that'll give you a uh, Road Warrior uh, title. But yeah, just kill the Framebalisks, and then from there you move over to Ovalisks and the Vile Fang, I believe this place is called, and just kill them. Watch out for their poison effect, that's about the only thing I can suggest out of this, because... They're fairly easy to actually just topple, especially if you have your uh, artifact um, already enchanted. From there you go to hunt dusky basilisks, yep, more basilisks. There's actually a lot of black basilisks in this thing that you gotta go and kill, so be prepared. And you collect another artifact here, enchant it up, and then you move on into the labyrinth. The labyrinth is annoying because there's some doors that you can't get past, but once you can actually just walk around, and find one in, you can just kill the uh, juggernauts that are in here. And they're not so bad to handle, they just take them out. Then you go to poor Elenu and to kill some terrorists. Terrorists are once again very easy because most of the time they don't even stand up fast enough for to, before they die. But after all this, I'm going to actually tell you the real trick to actually leveling. Because there's one segment in this entire thing that you can just completely and utterly bypass the whole BAM thing altogether. First, if you can get back to Velika if you don't have elite status, you want to buy one of these Almanthea scrolls. That way we're going to go to a place that's located off of uh, Almanthea. You can either use the flight path from it or the you can go and I'm going to show you where a merchant is where you can buy it, but you want to head to Turalian. I believe I'm saying that right. I'm probably butchering the hell out of the name, but this is where it is on the map. So, uh, if you have elite status, you can just use your travels guide to just jump right over here. But I'm going to show everybody how to get there. Go to, go to Amenthea. And here's where the flight paths are located. You can go and take those because it'd probably be cheaper than buying a scroll at your current level. But there's also a merchant right around the corner here. You'll usually teleport in right behind where I poured it in. And just walk around this corner here. And the merchant's right around where is where's that merchant again uh uh where'd you go where'd they put you oh there you are found the little devil he's just kind of hanging back here in a bank being like hey hey how's it going how's you into looking for a Turalyon scroll and there it is look look the scroll and then you get to Turalyon and you use the teleporter and you're gonna take off to a place called Seeker's Locus this is actually a neat little trick because I don't know if they're going to ever fix this because <laughs> as far as I've played they've always had this and I've always wondered about these plants but here at Seekers Locus you follow the road just a little bit north from the camp and you see with this puddle over here in the distance we're heading towards that puddle you kind of want to walk over to the side because I'm terrorless around pop my little really status bo uh, guild gold boost here Come on down here, and you see these plants? The, these, these are the bread makers right here. These plants, oh my god, I can't tell you how awesome these plants are. You kill these guys, and when you first get here, you go here at level 38. You want to come here at level 38, get your artifact weapon, then come out here. Because you can grind these things up to level 47. And the cool thing part is if you're a mystic, you can actually just summon your Thrall of Vengeance right here. And just watch the, the you can just AFK and level basically just throw throw vengeance kill when you first come out these things give like six percent of your total level and when you leave it's when you start to get to like the 47 area it's like three percent of your level I have a friend you can come over and have uh, him a, him or her attack this uh, other spawn that's over here just to avoid the terror lift in the middle there's only one little pause you want to take from killing these things, and that's at level 44, because you want to kill some of the BAMs to get your artifact weapon, because you could accidentally skip that and make your level 50 life a level hard, a lot harder. But afterwards, you teleport out with the BAM Vanguard thing, come over here to Dusky uh, not Ravenous Basilisks, and kill them for a few levels, and then... Uh, these guys are actually kind of more of annoying. This is when you're actually going to start to notice that everything's a little bit harder to kill. But, yeah, after that you go to Naga Battle, Battle Masters. These guys are the most annoying thing. Not only are they spread out a lot, there's also a lot of mobs in the area that are going to get in your way. 
And then after Naga Battle Masters, you got a mob of Leviathans, which are giant freaking crabs that are the most annoying mobs in the entire freaking game. I don't blame you if you actually want to go and start doing dungeons at this point to augment, because afterwards you go to uh, the hatchery and you have two mobs to kill, some Framberlisks or the Centaur guys. And again, in the past like 47, all mobs get incredibly annoying to kill, except for the very last guys, and those are the Sand Lurker Lizards. They're pretty easy to kill. The only this crazy thing that they do is they'll put a debuff on you that'll uh, reverse your keyboard binding, so it inverts it. So, at this point, I've pretty much showed you everything you need to do to get to like 1 through 60. You just kill all those BAMs back to back to back. But at level 58, you start to notice the Sand Lurker Lizards don't exactly give you the experience that you were hoping for. So you can have a friend drag you through either Labyrinth of Terror or Ebon Tower. Actually, at 56 you can get through uh, Labyrinth of Terror, but you will only ever get experience from the Vanguard at the end. The uh, Otherwise, uh, I really suggest you doing Ebon Tower, because if you do Ebon Tower, you get experience in every single boss kill. also like to point out that the Ebon Tower stops giving you good experience at like level 60, in which you're going to have to do the main quest lines at that point and follow the story through. But yeah, pretty much 1 through 60 is really easy and you can get through it in like 7 to like 8 hours and then go uh, on and do the quest line to level 65. Now to recap, you do Island of Dawn, and then you kill a guy in a camp, then you kill stuff at Godric's farm, into killing Framebalisks, into killing Ovalisks, into killing Dusky Basilisks, into killing Terraliths, then you kill some plants, right into doing Revenant's Basilisks, then you can move on to killing Naga Battle Masters, then you kill the very annoying Naga Leviathans. And then you can move over to the hatchery and where you kill uh, Flamberlisks or Centaur guys into killing Sand Lurker Lizards. And that's all it takes. And uh, once you get again, get to level 60, and you can take the teleportation scroll they give you and then start doing the quests. And that's the end of the video, so thanks everybody for watching, hope you enjoyed, hope this helps you out. If I missed anything, put something down below. And this was just for if you didn't know anything about the game, or if you're having a hard time leveling, uh, just help it out. I keep on getting people asking me this all the time, how do I level so quickly, and this is it. I get up in about 7 to like 10 hours, so thank you for watching everyone, subscribe if you like, and I'll catch you again in the next video. Bye bye! Durr.